All right. I'm sure you all have some impression of how advertising is uh, a fast-paced and hectic business. You've seen movies, you've seen television shows of our crazy lifestyle, and I'm here to tell you that that's all true. I had three martinis with breakfast before I arrived here this morning. <laughs> um, I'm also here to tell you that it's becoming too fast and too furious. In fact, all marketing communications are becoming too fast and too furious. The reason for that is simple. Technology has changed the way that we live, the way that we work, the way that we shop. And what that does is basically creates a, a lot of confusion with um, consumers being offered too much choice, and they're bombarded with too many messages, very few of which are, being, are registering or being remembered. This is a slide that shows that in the UK, less than 3% of all advertising is remembered in a positive way. What's important about this is that the UK is a very sophisticated market with very, very good creative advertising. Brilliant creative advertising. So 97% is not registering, is not being remembered. It's what we call invisible advertising, or it's registering in a negative way. Brand loyalty is not what it used to be. 89% of people believe that any particular brand that they're using is just as good, or the other brands are just as good as the brand that they choose. 70% of car owners will not be repeat buyers of the same brand. Chocolate lovers love a particular brand, but they don't always buy the same brand. So what does this do to marketing directors? It creates a lot of panic. It creates a lot of anxiety. Marketers are more interested in penetration today than in brand building. And that creates a vicious cycle. We used to build a brand identity that we thought would last a lifetime. Today, marketing strategies, brand strategies, positioning, campaigns, even taglines are changing on a campaign-by-campaign -campaign basis. They're changing faster and more furiously than ever. And that creates a vicious cycle. The more we change, the more we use different approaches, different platforms, different positioning, different taglines, they're not remembered. Core competencies now have an expiration date. What do we mean by core competencies? A company that knows what to do something really well, that's their core competency. When they get involved in different businesses, and they start to have problems, we say, refocus, come back to your core competencies. But what are core, core competencies today? Ask Apple. Apple Computer. They used to be a computer company. They took out the word computer, and now it's Apple Inc., because they realized they weren't just about computers. It was their operating system that could cross platforms and different technologies. Nokia, their core competency, the biggest the leader in, tele in te uh, mobile telephony. They're not around anymore. They were sold. They were about to go bankrupt. What was their core competency? Google, a search engine. That's their core competency, but now they're making Android telephones. They're making uh, uh, streaming devices. They're making tablets. They're making all kinds of things. They're making software. And what about this? Kodak, which, which was an iconic brand for so many decades, one of the strongest brands in the world for so many decades disappeared because they didn't move with technology. They didn't move with the times. Do you remember this? It looks like something from another era. It's the BlackBerry. In 2007, it was the number one smartphone used by professionals. The number one smartphone used by professionals. And all of these, the market leaders, where are they today? Palm, do you remember Palm? In 2006, a company called MySpace was bigger than Google. And within two years, they became irrelevant. By 2008, they became irrelevant. Facebook was not relevant in 2006 yet. So these are fast times, these are furious times. To be a brand leader, to be a market leader, a category leader, and to disappear within two years is fast and furious. Steve Jobs was famous for co-founding Apple, but he's actually more famous for reinventing Apple several times. He reinvented Apple at least three times within his lifetime. 
And at, at the same time, he changed the computer business, the music business, telecommunications, photography, and entertainment. He completely changed these industries. This gentleman is the CEO, the president and CEO of BBDO Worldwide. He told us recently that we have to reinvent ourselves every five years. We're not a technology company. We're an advertising network. We're an advertising company. And he's telling us we have to reinvent ourselves every five years or disappear. This is a sign of the times that are fast and furious. The future, of course, is digital content, right? We all agree on that. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's using it. We all agree. Five years ago, six years ago, ten years ago, we weren't so sure. Is it really the future? I want to provoke you into thinking that we're not using it correctly. We have to rethink and reinvent digital media, or it's going to be useless, because everybody is doing it, and everybody is doing the same thing. It's not about putting an ad that you created on television and putting it in social media and expecting to get the same results, simply because you got a few likes from friends and you think you're going to get results. The internet is a totally different way of working for us. It's a total, totally different way of communicating with people. And we have to take advantage of that. It's all about data analytics, knowing what works and why. Knowing what works and why. You don't just take an ad, a campaign that was done on TV, and slap it in social media. There's a coolness factor with social media. And if you're not cool, you don't become invisible like you would in other media. You become uncool. You're branded uncool. So you have to be careful about what you do. Data analytics with great creative is the perfect example of the right brain, left brain working together. It's knowing what works, how it works, and using great creative. It's the killer combination. It's what we call content intelligence. Not just having content, but having intelligent content. Content that's going to get results. Now, here's a fun fact. 85% of YouTube pre-roll ads, you all know what pre-roll ads are. You go on YouTube and you search for something that you want to see, and instead of watching what you want to see, you have an ad that you're forced to watch. And these ads play for five seconds or 10 seconds, depending on the platform, right? And you're confronted with this little button here that says skip the ad after that time frame, but you cannot skip it before that time frame. If it's 10 seconds, what do marketers do? They try to cram as much information as possible within that first 10 seconds. And what does that do? It makes for very annoying advertising. It makes for very annoying advertising. So one company in the US called the Martin Agency created what's called the unskippable ad. Instead of doing the norm, instead they, they did something breakthrough. They thought, how can we overcome this situation where people at 10 seconds are going to skip the ad. How are we going to do it? We have to entertain them in some way. We have to think of a way that's going to keep them watching. Watch this ad, please. Don't thank me. Thank the savings. You can't skip this Geico ad because it's already over. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. But it's not over. And you continue to watch, and you're entertained, and you're smiling, and I hear people laughing. And that's what it's all about, making you feel good, and wanting you, getting you to want to watch this ad. Instead of skipping, people are actually telling their friends, hey, did you see this ad? Go to YouTube and watch this ad. And it goes on and on and on. And you can, they created a whole series of these. And it won all kinds of awards at cons this year, simply because it broke the rule of the skippable ad. Here's another fun fact. 80% of Facebook videos are viewed without sound. Do you know that? 80% of, vi of uh, Facebook videos are viewed without sound. 
because when they're on your timeline, they play without sound until you click on them, and then they will play with sound. Now, most people don't bother to click unless it's something really, really important to them. They won't click, but they might watch it without sound. So if you have that insight, if you have that knowledge, you can create creative that is going to work even without sound. This was done by BBDO in New York. This was a spokesperson. Why would you put up a spokesperson in an ad that's going to be viewed without sound? That sounds silly. This is Marshawn Lynch. He's a famous American football player, and he's known, his nickname is The Beast. He doesn't like to talk. In fact, very few people have ever heard him talk at all. He has been fined by the National Football League for not giving interviews, and he has this reputation of not talking. So when it went on YouTube, and this played in all platforms, it played on television as well, when it, when it went on YouTube, everybody was curious to see what is Marshawn Lynch's voice like. So when it played without sound, Sorry, not changing. When Pepsi approached me about being their spokesman, I said, I don't know. I don't really like to speak. So they said, well, Pepsi's all about trying something new. Give it a shot. So I said, okay, as long as I don't have to speak. And they said, okay, would you at least move your lips? Glug, 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 glug. Ah, speech mode, boss. He finally speaks at the end. You hear his voice for two seconds. <laughs> um, with this insight, we can rethink storytelling and turn it into story showing. Another way of overcoming the silent videos. Story showing. Here's an example. It's much nicer with the sound, but you can get a message across for YouTube if you do it correctly without sound. Now, here's the, here's the trick. If everybody starts doing this with graphics, then you're going to get bored with watching lots of videos. So you have to constantly rethink, reinvent, recreate new breakthrough ideas. And that's why we have to reinvent ourselves every five years. This is uh, the chief executive officer, chief creative officer of BBDO Worldwide. His name is David Lubars. He's a very animated person, you can see from his photograph. And when asked about the future in advertising, he said this, I never position myself as a futurist. I don't believe other futurists who think they can predict the future. When asked, how can we cope with this new fast and furious situation, he said agencies should not allow themselves to let the cement harden around them. You're supposed to keep stirring and remain liquid, to, open, to be open to all these new things that will present themselves. And that's what it's all about. We cannot really know what's going to happen five years down the road, but we have to be able to keep moving along with everything that's happening. Instability is the new norm in our business. Instability. We have to deal with it by anticipating change, by making long-term planning into the short term, learning to adapt and take risks, make fast and furious turns, redefine core competencies every five years, make good use of data and data analytics, and whatever is working now, fix it anyway. Because the future is too fast and too furious. I thank you very much. I'm just